Hey guys, welcome to another Science Sundays. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Eugene Asarinsky. Um, he's the guy who discovered REM cycles. So since I've been having lots of lots of nightmares, I figured that would be fitting. And as far as makeup goes, I'm just kind of going to do a dreamy, I don't know, just going to bring in some of the colors of these shirts. Just kind of look, I want to look like a dream. So I don't really have any specifics on what I'm doing yet. So this is going to be just a play. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> so Eugene Asarinsky was born in on May 6th, 1921. Um, he was a graduate at the University of Chicago in 1953 when he discovered the REM sleep. And basically this guy just worked tirelessly night after night. Um, he, he dragged an ancient, uh, brainwave machine called an Offner Dynograph from the basement to the physiology lab on the second floor of Abbott Hall at the University of Chicago. Um, he tinkered with it long enough to think it might not be totally unreliable. <laughs> and so, late one December evening in 1951, his eight-year-old son Armand came over to the lab and sang, sat patiently on an army cot while his father scrubbed his scalp and the skin around his eyes with acetone, taped electrodes to his head, and plugged the leads into a switch box over the bed. And then from the adjacent room, Askerinsky, As Askerinsky calibrated the machine, telling Armand to look left, right, up, and down. Uh, the ink pens on it jumped in concert with his eyes. Asarinsky sat at a desk watching his son sleep. He was 30 years old. He was a trim, handsome man of medium height, with black hair, a mustache, blue eyes. When he was not in his lab coat, he usually wore a bow tie and a dark suit, so he was a classy guy. He, he was a graduate student in physiology, and his future was writing on this research, so. Okay, he had nothing but a high school degree to fall back on. His wife was pregnant with their second child. They lived on campus in the converted army, in converted army barracks. Money was so tight, he would eventually have to accept a small loan from his dissertation advisor. As he was sitting there, the hours crept by in Abbott Hall, and the long banner of graph papers unfurled. He noticed the pins tracking his son's eye movement, as well as the pins registering brain activity were swinging back and forth, suggesting he was a suggesting that his son Armand was alert and looking around. Which, he was like, great, okay, he's awake. Study's over, I can go take a nap. I'm gonna go in with a purple lavender highlighter on my cheeks. Ooh. So he went to go check on his son because he thought, okay, he's awake. Um, but his eyes were closed. He was fast asleep. What the heck was going on? <laughs> Another problem with that machine, like, obviously it's just too old, it doesn't, you know, it's not reliable. Asarensky didn't know what to think, um, but he was on the, he was on the brink of a great discovery, which was REM, uh, or rapid eye movement. But scientists had not really understood much about the sleeping brain. So much is still not known about it, honestly. Um, and if you think about it, the structure of DNA was discovered really before anything was known about the physiological condition in which people spend one third of their lives. Yeah, you spend like 25 years of your life sleeping. <laughs> the REM state is so important that some scientists have designated it a third state of being, yet the phenomenon itself remained hidden in plain sight until September 1953 when those experiments were conducted by Arsarinsky. Ars His now famous paper, which was co-authored by advisor Kleitman, was less important for what it revealed than what it began. I think for my eyes I'm gonna go in with, can, oh, I kinda wanna bring in this blue. So it basically began exploration on the sleeping brain. 
um, up until that point, it was assumed that sleep was just a passive state, um, that really nothing was going on. You were just pretty much, it was like a little death. <laughs> there was no stimulation and the brain simply switched off at night. That, that's what they thought. Um, but after the REM was discovered, scientists saw that the sleeping brain was actually cycled between two distinct electrical and biochemical climates. There we go. Nice baby boo. Um, so one is characterized by deep, slow wave sleep, which is sometimes called quiet sleep but is now known as non-REM or in-REM sleep, and the other characterized by RE sleep, REM sleep, also sometimes called active or paradoxical sleep. By the way, I'm using the James Charles Morphe palette for anybody that's curious. Not my favorite palette in the world, but I bought it and I'm using it. That's the color I'm looking for. There we go. I always feel like I get better payoff when I use my fingers. That's much better. Okay. So the mind in Aryan sleep ha usually have vivid dreams. Um, there are some brain structures that consume oxygen and glucose at rates equal to or higher than waking. So it's basically like it's all still going. So what they thought that it was like, nothing's going on, your brain's turned off, you're not doing anything. No, everything is still functioning as if you were awake, which is wild. Um, much better. Okay. Um, the surprising implication is that the brain, which generates and evidently benefits from sleep, seems to be too busy to get any sleep itself. <laughs> the discovery of REM launched a new branch of medicine, leading to the diagnosis and treatment of sleep disorders that affect tens of millions of people. It also changed the way we view our dreams and ourselves. It shifted scientists' focus from the dreaming person to the dreaming brain and inspired new models in which the chimerical dramas of the night were said to reflect random neural fireworks rather than the hidden intentions of unconscious conflict or the escapades of disembodied souls. <laughs> so typically, whenever you're sleeping, it's really just your brain replaying things that you did during the day. So by showing that the brain cycles through various, neuro, through various neurodynamic phases, the discovery of REM underscored the view that the self is not a fixed state, but reflects fluctuating brain chemistry and electrical activity. Many researchers continue to hope that REM may provide a link between the physical activity of the brain during a dream and the experience of dreaming itself. It's hard to overestimate the importance of Asarensky's breakthrough. Um, said Burt states, an emeritus professor of dramatic arts at the University of California in Santa Barbara and the author of three books on dreams and dreaming. The discovery of REM sleep was just about as significant to the study of cognition as the invention of the telescope was to the study of the stars. So very important work here because if he, if he hadn't taken the time to look at people while they were sleeping, I mean, we would still think that nothing is going on. <laughs> so on my lips, I'm going to go in with a nice little peachy color, um, just to 
bring in some of that gorgeous pink. Give it a more pale tone. Now I'm gonna go in with my mascara. Um, so, 1950, when Asarensky knocked on Nathaniel Kleepman's office door, Kleepman um, was considered the father of my modern sleep research. Um, he was Russian, he was a Russian imagery he had received a doctorate from the University of Chicago in 1923 and joined the faculty two years later. There, he set up the world's first sleep lab, the cot where research subjects slept was pitched under a metal hood formerly used to suck out noxious uh, fumes from the labs. So he wanted to work with this man who also had, you know, the same passions, the same curiosities about sleep. Mm, a nice little touch of black. Yeah, there were not many scientists around that era that were interested in sleep. They were looking into other things, more important things they thought. Um, they just thought, you know, that's a waste of time. There's nothing that goes on when you sleep. Your brain just shuts off. Why are we looking at this? <laughs> We, why? Why are we wasting time? Despite the research on the electrical activity of the brain in the late 1920s, the understanding of sleep hadn't advanced much beyond the ancient Greeks, who viewed Hypnos, the god of sleep, as the brother of Thanatos, the god of death. Sleep was what happened when you turned out the lights and stopped the influx of sensation. Sleep was what the brain lapsed into, not what it actively constructed. Which was pretty dull stuff. Um, la petite mort, as the French say, the little death. But that's also what they call the orgasm, and well, once they looked into that, there's a lot more going on there, too. Well, I ran out of video storage, so that's all I've got for today. That was the end of the video. That was the end of all the information I've got. Um, let me know if you like this makeup look. Um, take my glasses off so you can see it clearly. Let me know if you like it. Um, subscribe, share this video if you liked it. Let me know what scientists you want me to talk about next Sunday, and I'll see you then.